What up, what up, Tile friends? Yo, yo, yo. Good to see you again. Thanks for tuning in to a hump, another Hump Day Financial. Once again, this is brought to you by HappyTileGuy.com. Get your website at HappyTileGuy.com. It is a design search engine optimize it, optimized in the back end to be found, to let you be found. So if you need a website, if you uh, think it could help your business with people, some of your clients, if they use Google, go ahead and check out happytileguy.com. If you want to stay in touch with all things Tile Money, go ahead and text Tile Money to 844-446-7623. All right, Tile friends, thanks a lot for joining me today. Today, we're going to be talking about how to calculate your price. We're going to go over a few ter some terminology, and we're going to help you um, come up with uh, markup and learn how to use markup to really get to the price that you want um, and, and for consistent profit. Uh, markup's one of the easier ways to calculate your price, in my opinion and most people's opinions. So... That's why we're going with this. And of course, that's uh, whatever that job costs you, the contractor, to perform uh, times your markup equals your sales price. You know, when we talk about pricing, there are a couple different things that we can talk about. You know, there's market based pricing, which would be things like, you know, uh, bread, a loaf of bread, a, a brand new 250, F 250, you know, a new work vehicle or whatever. Uh, maybe burgers and fries and fuel. These are all market-based pricing. But if you're a tile contractor, remodel contractor, what you're operating on and what you want to be striving for I, um, is not so much market-based, you know, pricing methods because it's really a cost-based pricing method. What does the job cost you times your markup, and that's what it is. Hey, it costs what it costs. You ever say that to your to your um, clients? Our potential clients, hey, it costs what it costs. Now, there are some more advanced techniques that we talked about, like price positioning to actually, you know, take that burger that's market-based and make it a, uh, position it as a luxury item. That's how we can come up with like $100 burgers, you know. There's probably even $1,000 burgers out there in Las Vegas, I think. Um, crazy stuff. So really price positioning to where it's up to you and the client who's going to be buying it what you position at. But we're not going to talk about that today. We did talk about it last week. If you want to check it out, uh, there, the link is in the show notes where you're watching this video. Check out our price positioning video for last week's uh, book club, I think it was. So let's go over some terminology. You know, gross profit, that's what you have left over after paying all direct job costs. So your direct job costs is going to leave you with your gross profit. And then, of course, your net profit is the money that's left over after every single bill has been paid. Really, at the end of the year, that's your net profit. That's money that you should really never even touch. That's, you know, um, the best way to remember this is gross profit is vanity. Net profit is sanity. Okay, so a lot of people focus on that large number. Oh, my God, look at all the blah, blah, blah. That's vanity. That's ins that's insanity. Because if you don't have that net profit, that, that little egg at the end of the year, you know, you might be going bankrupt. I don't care how much gross profit you had. And net profit, it's not your salary. Once again, this is not your salary. It has nothing to do with your compensation as the business owner. This is the business's compensation. This is the business's money. Your salary goes in the overhead expense, um, expense of your business, in my opinion. You know, it's essentially costing your business as, you know, you're an employee of your business. So that's how I want you to look at that. That's what net profit, gross profit is. Job costs or cost of goods sold, COGS, are all the direct job-related expenses. Like things like thin set, you know, waterproofing, um, all this stuff, you know, grout. Those are all, those are all COGS, right? Cost of goods sold. That's how much, that's the materials that went into it. Markup, markup is simply the factor, not a percentage. It's a factor that when multiplied by your COGS, that'll give you your sales price that you're going to need to cover all your job costs, your overhead expenses, as well as your net profit. Excuse me. So that is the importance of knowing what your, 
individual markup point should be, markup factor. Overhead, what is overhead? That's all the indirect costs, right? All the stuff that, you know, is going to keep costing you money without um, necessarily, you can't pin it to one job. So this is two or more jobs. So websites, you know, vehicles, things like that nature. How much profit should you aim for? You know, again, that net profit, 10% uh, would be considered healthy. That would be considered healthy. You could dip a little bit below there and you, certainly you can go ahead of, above 10%, but 10% net profit is gonna be healthy for your business. And so how do you plan this markup? Well, what is this markup magical number? How do you get to your markup number? You know, the, the, the figures you need are right there. It's, um, you know, first of all, projected annual sales volume. How much do you think you're gonna do in, in, in a year? Projected overhead expenses. How much overhead expenses do you think you'll have? And then what is your profit goal? So you need to, you know, have those three figures in your mind, set them in your mind, put them on paper. And then let's say your projected sales volume was $250,000. And your projected overhead expense, you know, is $70,000. So your profit goal is, again, 10% of the um, annual, the total sales volume, or $25,000. So what you're going to do is you're going to subtract, you're going to um, compute those numbers, put the $70,000 overhead expenses in the profit goal. That gives you the $95,000. So subtract the $95,000 from your projected sales volume of 250. So that leaves you with projected job costs of $155,000. And then what you're going to want to do is divide that total, the $250,000, by the $155,000 projected job costs. So remember, projected sales is $250 divided by the projected job costs, $155. Then you come up with your markup, $1.6. $1.6 is your markup. So that's the way you can come up with a number. You know, let's take a job. So let's take a smaller job, for instance, using this markup. Let's say you have um, a week-long job, and it's going to cost you $2,800 in labor. Maybe it's your time and your apprentices, or maybe it's two other employees or whatnot, but it's $2,800 cost to the company in labor. Materials for that week-long job are going to be $1,200. Of course, that's $4,000 to the company, so $4,000 total job cost times your, you know, your markup, 1.6 that we calculated just earlier. So that's going to give you 60% uh, markup is what that is. 1.6 is 60%. So that's going to give you the number, bring you up to $6,400. So for that $4,000 job cost to you, using this 60% markup, you know, it's $6,400. Um, that sales price should allow you to pay all those job costs as long as you didn't underbid it. Um, underestimate the time and the materials and all of your overhead expenses and make your projected 10% net profit. That's how, that's a very brief overview of how to come up with your unique price. Everybody has a unique price. And again, again, we can get a little bit more technical and last, I'm actually reading a book called Positioning and I'll recommend it to you, Positioning the Battle of Your Mind. Uh, Jack Trout is one of the authors, but this is a great book. We're actually doing something you can catch. Um, you can watch last week. We started a book club where I went over five chapters, the five kind of overview chapters. This week, we're probably only going to go over one or two chapters because I do want to keep that to under 10 minutes. So every single Thursday, we're doing that book club. And this, um, for the time being, until we get through it, is positioning the battle for your mind. So what positioning is, again, if you... You know, if you want to compete with a cheeseburger, you want to compete with tile, you can do that. You can be very competitive with your prices and your product. However, if you want to position yourself to be that best damn cheeseburger in town or the best damn tile setter around, you can position yourself to charge a lot more than the other cheeseburger stands or the other tile contractors. All right, tile friends, that's 10 minutes. That's our hump day financials. Join us next week where we will have Drake Vant Hall um, join
joining us to go over some financials. Now, he is a professional accountant. He's a professional bookkeeper. He's a professional CPA. I am not, so we'll get some word from him. You'll enjoy that. All right, Tile friends. Talk to you next week or tomorrow.